What? Build guides are back, my friends. It has been over a year. And in that time, you've managed to build up a thousand bucks that's burning a hole in your pocket. Maybe you've been grinding for gill at the local McDonald's, working late at the office, or perhaps you've been up to some slightly shadier stuff like trading skins in CSGO. But enough of your life story. You're wondering about the best way to turn that cash, that's my keys, not my wallet, cash into a gaming computer, and we've got you covered. Okay, so it has been a while, but I'm pretty sure I remember all the stuff we need. Screwdriver. Perfect. Pliers. Pliers. A pair of side cutters. A magnetic parts tray if you want to stay organized. And of course, the anti-static strap that I am always definitely actually wearing on my ankle when we shoot these guides. For our CPU, we've gone with the Core i5 7500. This quad core hits a sweet spot in Intel's lineup. It boosts up to 3.8 gigahertz, making it great, not just for gaming, but also for productivity and even light content creation. And stepping up to the i5 7600 means paying 20% more for only a 9.5% clock speed increase something we wanted to avoid for a value-optimized build like this one. First things first, make a safe workspace out of the motherboard box. Then, line up the golden triangle on the corner of the CPU with the imprinted triangle on the CPU socket cover. Then, undo the retention arm by pulling it away from the socket, then lifting. Carefully place the CPU onto the LGA 1151 socket with no force. Give it a little wiggle to ensure a snug fit. And finally, replace the retention arm. The socket cover will pop off on its own. Put that somewhere safe, because you might need it again in the future. Our cooling choice was pretty straightforward. Be Quiet sponsored this guide. But seriously, we chose the Dark Rock 3 in particular because it's overbuilt for our CPU, keeping our finished system nearly silent, and it's going to look <coughs> through the window of the PureBase 600 case that we found bundled with it for a fantastic price. To install, we first apply a rice-sized blob of thermal compound in the middle of the CPU. Then we flip the motherboard over and orient the backplate so that these screws sticking through are aligned with these cutouts. Next, place these weird shaped screws through the holes on the backplate, flip the motherboard back over, and slide these little C-shaped plastic clips onto the bottom of each post. Next, you'll need to screw on this piece, holding it in place on the front while you screw it in from the back, and then you'll need to secure the hold down brackets to the base of the heatsink using the included M3 screws. At this stage, you might need to reapply any thermal compound that you accidentally wiped off while you were flipping the motherboard around, and you'll want to remove the sticker from the base of the heatsink. Leaving this on would be a big problem. Finally, align the heatsink with the screws such that the fan will be blowing towards the back of the case and carefully lower the heatsink onto the motherboard, kind of like so. This last part is a little bit tricky, but you need to thread this nut onto this little stud and then tighten up the screws from the back. The cherry on top is cable managing the CPU fan connector and plugging it into the four pin CPU fan header on the motherboard. Buying memory for a budget build like this one is pretty straightforward. Just choose whatever dual channel DDR4 RAM is on sale at the time you're building it from a reputable brand like Corsair. If you have a windowed case like we do, then choose whatever sexy RAM is on sale at the time. 
This 16 gig of Vengeance LPX DDR4-2400 should be more than enough for the next couple of years, and it features a low profile heat spreader design for optimal compatibility. For installation, pull back the tabs on the end of the RAM slots, then, when you realize you've got a bit of a clearance issue, refocus your attention on the heatsink. Just remove the wires on the fan, move it up a little bit, and put them right back into place. Then, line up the notch in the RAM with the little knobby in the slot, then put the RAM gently in place and give it a little push on both ends until the tab pops back into position. Rinse and repeat for the number of dims you have, making sure that matching pairs go into the same color slots. The rationale for the case, besides of course Be Quiet sponsoring this video, is that for $100, it's a darn good deal. Featuring two Pure Wings fans, built-in fan speed control, and grommets for easy cable management. Oh, and most importantly, there is the super sexy tempered glass window. I mean, it's 2017, baby. And tempered glass always puts a smile on my face. We chose the Asus B150 Plus motherboard mostly because of its low cost. It's not a high-end product and lacks what we would consider to be some fairly basic features, such as overclocking support, a heatsink for the power delivery, and even an HDMI or DisplayPort output. But it's got USB Type-C and solid upgradability with support for AMD Crossfire, NVMe M.2 SSDs, up to seven total expansion cards, as long as a few of them are PCI, and our CPU isn't overclockable anyway. So the first step, as much as I love seeing my reflection in the glass, is to remove the side panel and put it somewhere safe where it won't get knocked over and break. Make sure you keep all the screws in a parts tray or some other location where they can't be knocked away. We couldn't figure out how to make installing an IO shield interesting, so put it in from the back like so and add fire. Make sure it's snapped into place. Next, holding the motherboard by the CPU heatsink, place it into the case and then tighten the six screws here, 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 and here. Or actually, one benefit of this case is that you only have to put in five since the center of the board is held in by a little nubbin. Now it's time to plug in the front panel connectors. HD audio plugs in here, so does USB 3, and then next is the front panel connectors, which go in a little like so. The positive ends are on the left. For our power supply, we went with the Be Quiet Pure Power 10 600 watt. Its 80 plus silver efficiency and high output capacity mean that it will run cool and quiet with room for future expansion. It's also semi-modular and painted black to match the inside of our case, which is critical, of course, in the tempered glass era. Inside the power supply box, you'll find all the modular cables you'll need. We grabbed one with three SATA connectors and another with PCI Express, as well as some cable ties and five screws. Huh, conveniently Be Quiet includes an extra in case you accidentally drop one. Place the power supply into the case with the fan on the bottom side so it isn't drawing in hot air from the GPU. Then screw in the four screws on the back and run your power supply cables through the cable management grommet. Moving around to the back, we run them back through the grommets to the other side where they need to go and plug in the eight pin and 24 pin power connectors for the motherboard. PCIe power stays hanging there for now and so does our SATA power. For graphics, we chose the AMD RX 480, in our case, the XFX flavor. Sometimes this particular card is more expensive though, so what we'd really recommend is choosing whatever brand is on sale at the moment. Like right now, for instance, at the time of recording this, this Gigabyte card is on sale. The RX 480 is a great choice for 1080p gaming, as we'll demonstrate in our system benchmarks later on. Undo the two screws on the PCI covers here and here. Place in the video card, making sure that the PCIe lock at the back engages. 
Then replace the two screws you removed before and plug in the 8-pin PCI Express power connector. It really is that simple. It's 2017, and in our minds then, an SSD boot drive is every bit as essential as a tempered glass side panel these days. So we went with a Kingston SSD Now 240 gig that gives us enough room for the operating system and a handful of programs and games. For overflow storage, we also threw in a cheap WD Blue One terabyte. Though it should be noted, you could easily increase the capacity simply by picking a bigger drive. First, we need to plug our SATA cables into the motherboard and pass them through the cable management grommets. Around back, remove the SSD mounting bracket, insert these four screws, and reinstall the SSD into the case. For the hard drive, the mounting bracket can be removed with these three thumb screws on the back here. Then you slide the hard drive in and secure it with the included spaced screws. Connect your SATA power cable to your hard drive, then realize that it won't quite reach the SSD. So move that bad boy over one slot, then plug in the included fan controller and bask in the glory of your victory. There will be no walk of shame back to the power supply box for another modular cable today. Though that won't save you from removing and reinstalling the hard drive when you realize that it's ruining the black and orange aesthetic of your build. Now, before reinstalling the side panel, connect your keyboard, mouse, and monitor, then boot up the system and press delete or F2 to get into the UEFI BIOS for your motherboard. Enable XMP to make sure your RAM is running at its rated speed of 2400 MHz. Then ensure that your USB drive that you'll have had to prepare before to be a Windows install bootable drive is recognized and restart the system. Once you're into the Windows setup, it's basically just click next until Windows is installed and you land at the desktop. The latest drivers can be found on the manufacturer websites for ASUS, Intel, and AMD. And this is also a good time to hit up 98.com to pick up your favorite free applications in a nice, easy to use package. Now it's finally time for some finishing touches like cable management, which actually isn't a lot of work in this case, pun intended. And then we're pretty much good to go. The system is assembled and we can just Ah, who are we kidding? It's time for some RGB pizzazz. We used up the final $3 of our budget on this USB mood lighting, passed it into the case through a PCI bracket, and then for good measure, lit the case on fire. Because like we said before, it's 2017 and no computer is complete without pyrotechnics or something to that effect. But in all seriousness, assembled, this thing looks pretty darn good. Compared to a couple of years ago, nice to haves like rubber grommets, easy cable management, and of course, that all important glass window have become much more affordable. And performance, while not mind blowing, compared to some of the over the top stuff we've done on this channel, will allow for solid gameplay and AAA titles while staying quiet and cool. So if you're looking for a moderately budget-oriented build that'll handle 1080p gaming at 60 FPS in heavy AAA titles and over 120 in esports games, this thing will be perfect.